Hello everyone, this episode of the Dribble Podcast does contain some themes and subject matters which you may find triggering, so be aware of that as you are listening. These includes uh, mentions of suicide. Um, if you find these sorts of subject matters triggering or if you have concerns about anything in your life, Lifeline is available on 13 11 14. The subject that is being discussed today is transgender, transitioning and basketball, um, and it should be noted that these are not subjects which are being discussed in a legal sense or in a medically uh, educated sense. They are opinions of the people involved. So we hope you enjoy the episode. Uh, We hope you are educated by the episode because this is an important subject for the sport. Yes! Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Google Podcast. My name is Craig O'Donoghue from the West Australian newspaper, taking you through another season of talking to guests from Perth Wildcats, Perth Lynx and WA Basketball in general to give you the best insight possible into what's happening in the sport throughout this state. And what's happening at the moment is the season's over for Perth Lynx after their semi-final loss to Townsville and the season was well and truly over for the Wildcats a couple of weeks ago. But it is a big Wednesday in basketball with Sydney and New Zealand set to battle it out for the deciding contest in the grand final series of the NBL, while Southside and Melbourne will fight for the other spot in the WNBL grand final at the same time. But in recent days, the talk has turned to the serious issue of transgender athletes and whether they should be able to compete in the NBL 1 competition. It is a divisive issue, it's a controversial issue, it's a personal issue and it is a confronting issue but one person who has been strong in her thoughts is a former Perth Lynx star Marina Whittle and I'm proud to say that she has come on to talk to us about this issue today. Marina welcome to the Dribble Podcast. Thank you I'm happy to be here happy to be a part of this. So Andrew Bogut put this on the agenda on social media and once that happened it was always going to blow up Uh, he wrote word is NBL1 South women have a biological male playing this upcoming season are you okay with sacrificing the sanctity of female sport in the name of inclusion? Hashtag girl dads, where are you? The hashtag is trendy until action is needed. Now, that tweet was viewed more than 630,000 times. I'm a girl dad, you're a female player. So let's talk. Um, you're okay with it, you've said on social media. Why? Look, I'm not okay with the way that it was brought about. I think it was quite irresponsible in the way that it was worded. Like, yes, biological male, but she has transitioned to become a female at the moment. And I think that misgendering her was inappropriate. And I think that it led to quite divisive and, like you said, quite hurtful or hateful types of comments. Like, there's no way to lead people down a understanding or positive way of thinking when you start bringing news like that out in that sort of negative light, you know? But what are your thoughts about it? Because I struggled with that and that immediately set me off because I hate seeing negativity. I hate seeing people be divisive and exclusive and not super welcoming. And that's one of the things that I'm a pillar for. And I use my career and my platform to kind of help change and help, help create like more inclusive environments. So if, from, from my perspective, I look at it, I'm, I'm a 46-year-old white male whose parents are still together and have been living in the same house since 1971 and I'm married with three kids. I reckon I'm the stereotype of every white male, I reckon, in that we, or straight white male, who, who would find it uncomfortable. I find it uncomfortable because I know the physical advantages that we have as males over women, despite the fact that, that when people transition, they receive drugs to, to change that. But there's just an uncomfortability about the integrity of sport, I suppose I would say, watching it from that perspective. But you're playing it. So why do you? Yeah. What, so you're the most important person here because it doesn't matter what the spectator thinks; it's what the player feels. So why you? Why do you feel the opposite? Talk us through where where you sit from that perspective because that's what I find interesting. Well, what I uh, love about this, right, is because it's just introducing a, a different type of challenge, and it. It's important to reference when people transition and stuff, they go through such a medical and hormonal journey that their testosterone levels and everything that's going on inside their body is completely different to that of a like a normal male, right, that's trying to just compete against women. That being said, as a female athlete, we compete against male teams all the time. And for people that haven't come out and watched a WNBL game or an NBL 1 South or West game, Females are competing at a highly physical level. I know it's not technically a a contact sport, but it is absolutely a contact sport. We hit each other, we're injured during the games, we hurt each other, we set hard screens, we're physical, we're strong, we are capable. And 
to say that we can't compete or to try and protect us when we have players like myself coming out and being like, look, it's really not a big deal. If she's medically cleared to play, if transgendered players are medically cleared to play and they've gone down that journey and the other side of their journey to tr- transition to create a happier life for themselves, they feel comfortable to step into a sporting world and be their truer self, then I have no problem competing against them. At the end of the day, if you step onto the basketball court against me, I am going to want to run through your chest to try and score a basket. I'm still going to try and win and I'm going to try and do everything in my power to try and beat you, you know? So it doesn't, it, yeah, to me, it doesn't really matter. As long as they're medically cleared and they've gone through all of the necessary steps and pathways to get there, there's no problem in my eyes. And you will play against uh, this woman this season because you are competing in NBL One South. You were the grand final MVP last year and took on our Warwick Senators in the national championship game. So it genuinely impacts you, which is which is terrific to have someone who's who's competing in that level. In, as I said, integrity of sport is interesting though. So from the, the drugs changing your body perspective, if we look at the elite, elite, elite women versus elite, elite men, so in in athletic capabilities. So Kathy Freeman's yeah. 400 metre time when she won gold at the 2000 Olympics would have placed her 64th in the men's competition. Ariane Titmus's 400 metre freestyle world record w- would have seen her finish 13 seconds behind the male winner. So it's a big gap in what we are born with. It, do you feel that that gap is reduced enough in, in these sorts of circumstances to, to make it a bit more even in, when a transitioning player would step out on court against you? Yeah, and I think, just quickly, I think it's really important to note that we need to remember the the types of people that we're talking about. Someone referenced on Twitter, like, if Mike Tyson at his peak decided to transition, it's not an overnight process. It's not an overnight journey. And people don't decide this haphazardly just to go and play women's sports. Believe it or not, the grass is not greener for women's athletes. Like, it, we are still pushing. And to try and say that people are – men are transitioning just to compete in women's sports is very, very dangerous We need to consider the individuals themselves and look at it at a case-by-case situation, which I think is the policies that they're going to start be introducing so that it's not like someone can just transition and decide that they want to play against us and then like take full advantage of the system. There is so much in place to stop people taking advantage of this sort of system. It is not as easy as people have been led to believe. And it is a massive journey that, that honestly would impact and change uh, a person that has transitioned in the first place. Like that's the whole point of the journey. So, sorry, to get back to your point, when people do talk about this and like we're comparing male to female sports, there is a very, very large difference in our performance and our physical capabilities. But it is important to remember that at the end of the day, it is an individual that is going through a transitionary phase of their life and they're trying to just be happier. And it's not like I don't believe – that someone like Mike Tyson or Michael Phelps and stuff struggles with gender identity to want to pursue a gender transition decision of their life. No, you would. That's absolutely correct. In that. Yeah. <laughs> and from, from, I should say from here, um, from a terminology perspective, if you're listening to this and this is affecting you, and we have, uh, especially me, get any terminology wrong, uh, that is not an intent at any point um, throughout this uh, interview. That I'm still learning about this as well as everyone. And if uh, we go, if I refer, if I say he, where I should have said she, or anything like that, that is a slip up rather than than me deliberately going down any path from. From there, I have asked other people if they wanted to come on and chat about this as well. Chloe Bibby is a Lynx player who said, as someone who plays in NBL One and in that same competition, I don't, I don't care what identity they are or pronouns. Um, I'm still going to go out there and try to beat their ass on court. They want to play <laughs> ball, and I have nothing but the utmost respect for this person. Go kill it, Queen is what uh, Chloe Bibby said, and she was a star this season and has been on this program previously. She was not allowed to appear. The Lynx didn't want her to engage in the potential abuse that comes online, which Marina has greatly <laughs> come on to join us, but Basketball WA have said Basketball WA supports the implementation of guidelines from Basketball Australia in respect to the participation of transgender and gender diverse people in the community, domestic and NBL1 West Basketball. So this will happen over here as well if there is a player who is, is eligible in under all of these different processes. Um, there's a, there's a really interesting part that you talked about before, the, the, the transitioning of life. It's not just the transitioning of, of body. How difficult would that be for someone? Do you know many people who are going through this sort of lifestyle change? I'm not going to pretend like I'm some sort of expert as well. Like For me, I just am an ambassador for Queer Sporting Alliance, which supports like open 
uh, lifestyles and people being able to compete in basketball and play basketball without having to be concerned about the safety or like the safety of the environment and stuff. Uh, I have had a little bit to do with people that have transitioned and like I live a very open and um, supportive lifestyle that, you know, I like to engage with all different types of people within the community. And it's always important to remember that like there is the lifestyle version of this. Like, if you look at the percentages of people who are in the queer community that are suffering depression or have mental health issues or even um, attempt, and I'm so sorry to bring this up, but like attempt um, like suicide because they're so unhappy. Like transition isn't transitioning isn't something that people consider just because like things aren't going great like this is a big life decision and life changing decision so it's for the betterment of their life rather than for just to play sports and again i'm sorry i'm not a i'm not a, an expert by any means i am just someone who wants to see people living their truest self living life to their best possibility the highest quality of lifestyle that they can live and i just fully support people people being themselves like i would love a world in which we don't see any negativity surrounding people just wanting to be themselves and you, you mentioned that that potential suicide is a real part of life and and I, I'll, t- I'll tell a story here. I, I coached previously in a different sport and had one of the people under my charge come to me during the season saying he was having problems at home he thought i knew he was gay i was apparently the only person in the club who had no idea he was um because i was his coach and i didn't hang out with him on the weekends but everyone else knew but he, he asked me for some support about what he could do at home to make his parents make his life easier so i asked for a couple of days to think about it because i didn't know and i approached a gay friend and asked him for his thoughts and and, uh, and he sent me an email back the next morning saying, tell him to give me a call at some stage so I can learn about more about him and see if he's depressed, shy or introverted. I don't want him to become a young gay statistic. And that yep. final comment rocked me. Like, yeah, I hadn't even considered that when we were, when we were chatting on, on a footy field. Do we have any idea what you, you and other gay people go through when they're making a decision to come out or just to try to be settled within their own mind about what their life actually is? Oh, my gosh. Well, when you look at everything that we're taught or that we have been taught through school, through society, and it's changing, but it's trying to change, like, the entire norm. Like, people are are brought up kind of expecting to be heterosexual. Like, there's heteronormativity is the way that we approach general life, right? And it's slowly changing. We're starting to understand that, you know, there are queer, bi, gay, lesbian people all around us, and that's starting to become more accepted. But the idea of coming out and changing people's perspective is a very scary fearful experience that people can have because you're going against potentially like small comments that family members can make or small little body language like body language um reactions that people make is something that we're very aware of i didn't come out to my family until i was 18 and i came out to my friends when i was 16 and it was something that i was actually on the lookout for and trying to read their body language for years beforehand to see how they would actually respond to it. So, and sometimes people don't even recognize their own sexuality and they face like um, personal shame or guilt as well because they're unsure of their own sexuality and they don't understand why they're not comfortable with certain parts of themselves. So it's this whole intricacy that people aren't super aware of to be straight and to be comfortable is and to be welcomed into society without having to bat an eyelid is an extreme privilege. And I would just urge people to consider like, if they had that privilege taken away or how that privilege of just being assumed straight is handled every single day. So is the message that while some people are talking about, I talk about the integrity of sport and we're looking at wins and losses on the court, there is the real possibility that people have a loss in life, which is the loss of their life, if we're not more open to how people feel in these circumstances. Is that, is that the message you're trying to push? I'm not trying to push it. I just think that people need to be aware of the impacts of negativity can have to people's everyday lives. Like, we're only talking from a basketball scope, but basketball, and you see it even in, like, WNBL and NBL players, like, 
if people who aren't happy, it really shows on the basketball court. And like, if people aren't performing their best, then it can affect their daily lives. Imagine trying to play a normal sport and trying to play just basketball, something that you enjoy, and getting harassed for the type of person that you are. And then that doesn't stop outside the stadium, and it follows you home, and then it follows you onto social media, and that's surrounding you every single day. My push is that people start to consider that basketball isn't just a sport and how we behave towards players can impact our everyday lives and impacts people's everyday lives. And it's bigger than that. And we would, worst case scenario, want to avoid anyone becoming a statistic. Is there a level where it gets um, from a, a, a sporting perspective where, where it gets to a point where it's so high and there's, and there's so many sheep stations on the line? I'm talking about you're playing Commonwealth Games three by three, uh, three x three, yeah. um, and you're going for a bronze medal. Like, uh, so you're wanting a bronze medal. So would you be as comfortable as you are playing an NBL one level against a transitioning athlete again in at international level when there's you know the, when the, the level of talent is even higher? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I would see it as a challenge uh, because of all of like the, if we're talking about like the physical aspects that a transgender person can still have, like there's taller, stronger, whatever. It's still a challenge. Like it's just as much of a challenge as it is trying to play against Lauren Jackson in the NBL One East, you know, like she's taller, stronger. No one could stop her. She drops 30 points every game practically. And she's just an elite athlete. You know, when I consider playing on the international stage against, you know, a player that's transitioned, I would still recognize that player as a female. I would believe that the right guidelines and the right policies have been followed. She is medically cleared. And for all intents and purposes, she is a female athlete and I just need to try and beat her to try and win a medal. It's just as tough as playing any other country that's better skilled, higher, stronger. And we, yeah, it, to me, it's no different and it would make no, no different. I wouldn't sit back and have any sort of opinion of the person. I would be, <laughs> if anything, if we lost, I'd just be a bit pissy at myself, to be honest. <laughs> Now, Basketball Australia put out a statement uh, on Tuesday night saying uh, Basketball Australia prides itself on being a sport for all, ensuring all participants experience a welcoming, fair and inclusive environment. It's been disappointing to see the negative commentary and hurtful language used across social media over the past 24 hours since it was made public that Basketball Victoria had received an application for a transgender athlete to play in the NBL One South competition. We ask for patience and understanding as we support Basketball Victoria in navigating through this complex space with integrity and respect for all involved and also thank those in the community who have shown sensitivities at this time. Do you feel for the person who's suddenly become thrust into this without probably having any oh. idea it was going to it was going to lob on Andrew Bogus Twitter account? Oh my gosh, I feel so bad. I I hope that they're okay. And honestly, if I were them, I wouldn't even want to play basketball. Like why would I put myself in a situation where people can continue to be so negative it's like okay well if you have an issue like go off then you know what it doesn't sound like a place that anyone else feels comfortable playing in the in the first place I feel so bad for her I hope that she's okay um and I've got some uh, I've got Queer Sporting Alliance taking care of her and um everyone close to her is taking good care of her but I just I hope that she's okay so you've spoken to her personally uh no not yet um but I think that at the end of the day, we just need to remember that this is an individual and it's not going to determine any future cases or any current cases, not changing the landscape of basketball completely. This is a first, the first one is always the hardest, but this will change and create a hopefully positive environment for all people trying to play basketball moving forward. And I've had a lot of parents that have come out to me and um, like express their concern for their children. And to them, I just say, Policies will change, guidelines will be created to make sure that all people, including transgender and transitioning athletes, feel safe and are secure playing sports and everyone can play safely. The contest will be officiated correctly. Basketball will be taught correctly. Everything should be taken care of. It's people's jobs to make sure that policies are in place to make sure that people are protected. There's some basketball being played today too. So um, let's start with oh, the, let's start with the one where there's a trophy up for grabs. You got any thoughts? Who wins out of Sydney and New Zealand tonight? Oh my gosh, I love it! It's been such an awesome contest. I really think the Breakers are going to get it. I want the Breakers to get it. The, like, both teams have absolutely lost their minds over this five game series, haven't they? Like, it's amazing what pressure does to people. You got Chase Buford losing the plot on, on in press conferences. You got players abusing the hell out of each other everywhere. It's um, it's fun. It's fun to watch from the sidelines, isn't it? 
oh my god, it's been so good for basketball, and I love the drama. Who knew five games could be so insane? I thought we should go to seven, but fire out tonight is going to be the best game so far. It's going to get it's going to get so chippy. Oh, it's going to be insane. And what about the league you compete in? Will it be Southside or Melbourne getting through to the grand final? Oh, that's a tough one. Southside are star studded, but Melbourne have had the experience of last year's championship. I personally think that Southside are going to take it. They're just so good and they've been dominating this last half of the season. Can anyone beat Townsville? <laughs> I guess I guess we're going to find out. <laughs> they're, they're, they're pretty damn good, as we've seen over here for the past couple of games uh, against the Lynx. Five times I've beaten so the Lynx throughout the ready. season. <laughs> Personally, I can't see anyone beating Townsville. They've, they've been amazing. So, um, oh, it's, my it's God. Been, and they've, yeah, 14 in a row, it's, it's quite an astonishing season and you'd, you'd like to see a team like that go through and win it when, you, when they're on such a roll. Absolutely. Imagine if they got to 16 in a row. Like, they haven't lost in, like, months, it sounds like. Yeah, January 5 was the last time the, the Fire lost a game, so it's been a hell of a long time. Well, I really appreciate you coming on. It's a position where you can't win when you debate these sorts of things because people are going to abuse you one way or the other. Um, so the fact that you've had the courage to come and have a chat, uh, when I rang you yesterday, you're like, hey, it's been a few years since we've chatted. Uh, it's been a while since you've been in Perth, but it's um, it's, it's great to chat and I really appreciate the fact that you are providing this sort of insight and helping to educate everyone because there's not a lot of education when it comes to this sort of stuff. It's just a hell of a lot of social media abuse and we all learn things mm-hmm. by chatting. So thank you for your time. No, thank you so much for having me. And for anyone that's listening, I really urge you to put yourselves in situations to learn a little bit more before you start passing on judgments. It's been a hectic 24 hours, but let's just remember that there are people who are being affected by this at the end of the day. Well, that's it for this week's episode of the Dribble Podcast. Remember, you can read all of your basketball news in the West Australian newspaper and keep logging on to thewest.com.au. Thanks to Marina Whittle for her time today. Thanks to the magnificent Kate Ryan for her production work as always. We'll be back next week with another episode of the Dribble Podcast. Podcast.